lovely phrase this morning. We're waiting for more. We're waiting for more. I want you to take your seats just for a few moments. I'm about to, uh, we're going to lead into uh, doing communion this morning. We're going to partake together of communion. I've got a couple of passages of scripture I want to read to you. And uh, directly after communion, I'm going to invite those who want to be healed, who need healing and who need a touch in their life to come forward. And we're going to pray over you. Hallelujah. So Colossians chapter 2 verse 13 says this. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. Hallelujah. He made us alive through the act of the cross, through what he did. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Am I in a Pentecostal church this morning? We we need to understand that what God did this morning was an amazing, amazing thing that included us into the kingdom. He brought us into the kingdom. He made us alive. You know, we don't have dead worship. Well, this side doesn't have dead worship. We have a live worship. We have, the, the church is called Live Church for a reason. It's because Christ has come to set us free and He's given us life. So we were made alive with Christ. When Jesus rose from the dead, we were made alive at that point in time. Even though you weren't born at that point in time. Even though you weren't even thought about, God knew you, God thought about you, He knew you. And at that point in time when Jesus Christ suffered on the tree, suffered on that cross and and was buried for three days and rose again, He thought about you and me. We rose again that day. Hallelujah. Amen. We look back to the cross. We thank God that we have new life in Him. The Bible says He forgave us of all our sins. Isn't that exciting? Not just one of them, Gary. All your sins. Not just one of your misdemeanors. All of our sins. It was completed at the cross. I'm telling you, if you can't get excited about that, maybe you're dead this morning. He forgave us. He forgave everything. Everything I've done wrong. Everything you've done wrong. He forgave us of all our sins. And verse 14, I want you to pay attention to this. Having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. See, the Bible declares that it was a legal debt that we held because of the sin of our life, because of sin that came in through Adam and Eve. We had no way of paying the debt. You and your goodness had no way of paying that debt. But Jesus, because of what he did at the cross, he cancelled out that debt. He went before the almighty judge, the righteous judge, and he said, God, my God, my my God, I will take that punishment for them. I will take that punishment for you. Thank God that they were nailed to the cross. Think about a nail. It's just a little thing. But oh, there's power in the nail that nailed Jesus to the cross. There's power in the name of Jesus this morning. I really believe this morning that that God wants to heal and touch. There is not one person here that needs to stay in this sickness because of what Jesus did at the cross. Amen. Praise the Lord. Here's another passage of scripture I really want to read. And and, uh, if you need healing this morning, why don't you come as I read this. Matthew chapter 8 verse 14. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law. Now God loves mother-in-laws. He loves your mother-in-law. He saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed. I can go a long long, long way with that one, but I'm not going to do that. Lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her. Hallelujah. And she got up and began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him. And he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and bore all our diseases. He did that at the cross. I love that about Jesus. He goes into a house and someone's got a fever. Hey, look, they're not lame. They're not dead, dying. They're, you know, they're, 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 they're sort of still living, and, but they're, they're not well. They've got a fever. You know, a couple of people here today I know have fevers and aren't doing so well. We, we can think about Alia, Brock's um, daughter, um, all night last night vomiting and, and we need to pray for the family. Brock's not doing too well, but he's here worshipping Jesus. I said to him, he's not allowed to fall over unless it's in the power of the Spirit. 
But Jesus healed all our infirmities. I love the terminology here, don't you? It says he healed. That's past tense. That means it's done. Do you get that, church? He's healed your disease already. All we need to do is walk in it. Come and claim it. Say, thank you, Jesus. Amen? Praise the Lord. Why don't you stand with me? As those that need healing this morning, you come. And before we pray, we're going we're gonna to ask the ushers to come and serve you first communion. Because it's what Jesus did at the cross. He healed our diseases. He forgave our sins. So if you need healing this morning, even if you've got just a little fever, it's just a little complaint, maybe you've got a scratch. <laughs> Jesus cares about your scratch. Just before you serve, just, just if, if the, the um, ushers can hold off for just one moment. Those that need healing this morning, want prayer, just come right now. Come right now. We're going we're gonna to pray for you. We want to serve you first. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is so good, isn't he? God is so good. Praise the Lord. I wonder if the ushers can come and serve those standing in line first. We're going to ask the, uh, the prayer team to come up in just a moment, but they're going to come and help pray. No matter what your illness, no matter what your disease, he took it on the cross. What an amazing truth. serve everyone else now that's great thanks guys for those standing here and, and uh, coming and in faith that's why you're here this morning it's not just a hope it's a, a faith it's a it's something that, that burns within you that you know that god's going to touch you and um you know it's not just a hope now it's going to become reality i love that about god at the cross at the cross where i first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away it was there by grace i received my sight and that Thereby, faith, I receive my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Jesus wants to make you happy right now. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we stand here, Lord, amazed at the cross. Lord, just those nails that pierced your hands and pierced your feet, Lord. Lord, just the agony that you would have sensed, Lord, not just in the bodily pain, Lord, that what we're going through, Lord, but the, the separation from your Father, Lord, in order that we would come into righteousness with you into the kingdom. And so, Father God, with, with that in mind, with the, with the amazing thing that you did across, you forgave our sins and healed all our diseases. With that, Lord, we reach into eternity, past and present and future. Lord, we reach out with our hands and say, Father, may, Lord, this morning we appropriate the healing that took place at the cross, that took place, Lord, with that whip, Father, on, on your back. Lord, may we reach forth into eternity right now, out of this dimension into another dimension. Lord, may we claim and, and just re receive of all the healing that we need this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you go ahead and partake of your communion this morning. Father, we thank you for the, the bread, the broken, that represents the broken body. We thank you, Lord, for your, the life, Lord, that we, we get from this. Let's eat together in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for the cup. It represents your spilt blood. We thank you, Father, that you spilt it for us, for the remission of sins, that we would be sinless before you. We thank you for what you did at the cross right now. In Jesus' name, let's partake together. As we continue to worship, we want the prayers to come help us pray this morning. If you're here to receive prayer, I want you to um, put your cup in front of you on the uh, on the altar here. Put it in front of you and just lift up your hands and just begin to believe God. Come on, believe Him. Believe Him. Come on, pray this prayer. 